It's official. The very first Captain Marvel trailer has finally been released, and it's everything we could have wanted and more. It's our first live action look at the hero, played by Brie Larson, which finally gave fans of the MCU more insight on what exactly her solo film will entail. Now, for those of you out of the loop, Captain Marvel was hinted to at the end of Avengers Infinity War, with Nick Fury sending out a distress call to her via space beeper, and spoilers, seconds before he was dusted by Thanos' snap. Since, theories have been ablaze as to how Carol Danvers will be involved in the upcoming Avengers sequel, and how her origins will play out in her solo film that will be released this upcoming March. Now, the Easter eggs and references we'll be discussing in this video shine some light on those questions, and a lot of other things too. So without further ado, here's our top 10 Easter eggs you missed in the Captain Marvel trailer, and also other stuff. And at number 10, Blockbuster. The trailer begins with Carol falling out of the sky, crash landing into a building which just so happens to be a Blockbuster. Now for those of you who didn't live through the 90s, Blockbuster was a big deal. It's how you watched movies at home before Netflix and the internet ever existed. And to be quite frank, if Brie Larson crashed into any of the Blockbusters ever, they would probably still be in business. Just saying. The Captain Marvel film will be taking place during the 1990s, and the filmmakers have already made it clear that her Earth scenes will be chock full of 90s references. Even the photos that were recently released by Entertainment Weekly featured Carol wearing a 9 inch nails t shirt. So get ready for a blast from the past, friends. And at number 9, Ties to Shield. Speaking of that 9 inch nails t shirt, after a shot of her standing out of place in her Star Force uniform in the middle of a subway station, we see her in those civilian clothes with a hat that appears to have the original Shield logo on it. She then presses her finger against an electronic finger pad, accessing a facility alongside another individual who we think it's safe to assume is Nick Fury, because he's also the character speaking in the voiceover. This then cuts to a shot of a facility with sparse medical equipment. And Nick Fury holding a gun while a doctor examines a scroll spread out on the table. Now this implies something that we already figured, that Carol ends up working with S.H.I.E.L.D., or at least Fury, and that S.H.I.E.L.D. is aware of the scrolls and their threats, or perhaps finds out about the scroll threat in this movie. Now for those of you unfamiliar with the scrolls, they're the alien race that are mortal enemies of the Kree, and the film has been stated to be exploring the kree scroll war that's famous in the comics. Many have also speculated that it may lead into Secret Invasion, the comic event in which the scrolls secretly infiltrated Earth. They're shapeshifters, able to disguise themselves however they choose. But more on that later. Up next, number eight, Beeper. Another 90s reference, Nick Fury also has a beeper that he uses in the trailer. But it's not the same space beeper as the one that we saw at the end of Infinity War, though. This could imply two things. One, the reason why they have a special beeper in Infinity War is because at that time, that was the technology that Carol became familiar with. And this throwback will be used as a sort of sentimental beat in the overall narrative when we reach the end of the movie. It's a cute connection between her and Fury. Two, the message that Nick Fury sends out with the beeper in the trailer reads, with target, meaning maybe Shield as an organization organization doesn't have the best intentions for Carol after all, if she is the one who is considered the target. And at least, maybe that's the way it is in the beginning of the film. And at number 7, Nick Fury. In his voiceover, Nick Fury states, I quote, Space invasion. Big car chase. Truth be told, I was ready to hang it all up until I met you today. This is followed by the reveal of a DH Samuel L. Jackson. And take a look at that, he's got both eyes, still seen properly out of not one, but two of his peepers. It also appears that Nick and Carol may go rogue at one point, with Nick dressed in civilian clothes and Carol in her 9 inch nails outfit in one shot while they drive down an empty desert road. There's a good chance that that finger pad that we mentioned earlier that Carol pressed her finger against is actually her using her powers to bust into an empty shield facility with Nick. And that would tie into that beeper target note that we mentioned in our last number two, with him perhaps turning against his orders. Speaking of shield agents, we get a brief shot of Coulson in this trailer, and he's got more hair. Not much more to say on that other than it's great to see him again. And at number six, the helmet. In one quick shot in the trailer, we see the Star Force speeding through a bluish dark area, which matches up pretty well with the description of the train of the leaked scene description that hit the interwebs a little while back. This scene is supposed to follow the Star Force heading out on a mission to a different planet, and Carol eagerly jumping into action. Now in this shot, you can see that she's wearing her helmet from the comic. It's got some blue stuff over it too, implying that perhaps this is how she's able to travel through space without, you know, not being able to breathe, or perhaps being able to survive other poisonous elements. Now this helmet is from the comics. It received a lot of criticism over the years for being kind of silly looking, but it's a nice touch to see the filmmakers incorporate it into her Star Force uniform. You also get a better look of it towards the end of the trailer too. And at number five, her power. Hours. You see Carol drop to the ground after a sequence of her as a child and a youth falling also to the ground during various activities. It appears that she's near something that looks like a crater of sorts. Perhaps an alien ship has crash landed nearby? Then, later on in the trailer, we see her in her pilot uniform being thrown back by a blue blast of energy. Could this be the event on Earth that gave her her powers, in which her DNA was melded with Kree DNA? Now, in the comics, when Carol first appeared, she was a supporting character to the then Captain Marvel, Marvel, who will be played by Jude Law in the movie. During an explosion, Carol's DNA melds with his making her a half 
half Kree hybrid, and she eventually takes up the mantle of Miss Marvel. Now, according to Marvel Studios, we know that her origin will be changing slightly, which is also pretty obvious from this trailer. But it's still a safe bet that her powers come to be in a very similar way as they do in the panels. In at three, Carol's memories. In the trailer, Carol describes that she keeps having flashes of memories. We see a shot of her looking out over Kree Lar, the city on Hala, intercut with her on Earth in a previous life as an Air Force pilot alongside Monica Photon Rambeau. She goes on to describe, I quote, I see flashes. I think I had a life here, but I can't tell if it's real. This is followed by an epic shot of her embraces in some sort of contraption that is shooting energy into her temples and appears to be some sort of memory wiping machine. Are the Kree wiping her memory? The fact that she can't recall her previous life or perhaps how she got her powers means that maybe her position on the Star Force isn't actually a voluntary one. The Kree could be using her abilities for their benefit, and the story she's been told about how she ended up on Hala may not be the truth after all. Which leads us to our next number. At two, is Marvel the antagonist? Could Jude Law's Marvel be the real antagonist of the movie? If this trailer hints at anything, it's that the Kree have taken Carol's memories away, and that Carol also gets her powers in a similar fashion as she does in the comics. Could Marvel be betraying Carol's trust in actuality, having accidentally given her her powers when he crash landed on Earth, and then abducted her, taking her back to Kree Lar to use in the benefit of the Kree people? At the very end of the trailer, there's this really badass sequence of Carol standing up and clenching her fists. And it then ends on a shot where we get to see a tiny glimpse of her Captain Marvel uniform before its big end trailer reveal. Carol makes a fist in her red gloves, while facing a figure standing in front of her that's out of focus. That figure has a fair complexion, so it's not McFury, and it doesn't look like a scroll soldier either. Rather, it kind of looks like Jude Law, meaning maybe they face off at the end of the movie. And finally, in at number one, punching grannies. The shot of Carol punching an adorable smiling grandma may have been slightly jarring to some, but considering the scroll's presence in the movie, that is most definitely not a grandma. This implies something really cool. Carol might have the ability to see scrolls even when they're disguising themselves. Considering the shot is on some form of public transportation, that scroll most definitely did not just shapeshift. It's also likely that the scroll that Carol is fighting atop the train in the earlier sequence in the trailer is this scroll, because you know, public transportation. And she probably defeats that scroll, because it's likely the same scroll that appears on the gurney in the facility shot that also appeared earlier in the trailer that we talked about. This also confirms that there are scrolls on Earth now, which means the theory that the film may have ties to Secret Invasion is very plausible, and that perhaps Carol has been absent from the MCU the past 20 years because she's been taking care of the scroll threat while working with S.H.I.E.L.D. in some way. There's a theory kicking around on the interwebs that perhaps Carol has been working through the quantum realm to go through time and remove scroll agents. It's a very interesting one, and this trailer actually kind of helps support it even more. Alright, there we have it friends, what are your thoughts on the trailer? Do you have new theories that are brewing about how Captain Marvel will tie into Avengers Infinity War? Let us know in those comments below. If you dug this video, hit that like button, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for all of your Captain Marvel and MCU news. In the meantime though, thanks for watching everybody, I'll catch you all in the next video.